Okay. I'd like to get your attention, please. Since it's, we have a lot of candidates to hear from tonight, we're going to go ahead and try to get started on time. Um, my name is Rhonda Moore. I'm the Executive Director at the Juniata River Valley Chamber of Commerce. We cover both Mifflin and Juniata County. Um, we decided that this was an important thing to do to have this opportunity for you guys to come, um, for the candidates to present their platforms, introduce themselves. Um, on my flyer and my, my little mantra for this has been, your vote is your voice, and, and I believe that. So, and it's good to have an educated decision when you're in there ready to vote. So that's why we put this event together, so that you could hear from all the candidates, Get an idea of what they stand for so you can make an educated decision. Um, the way this is going to run this evening, um, you all received a piece of paper um, showing you we did randomly select uh, the order, put everybody's name in there, jumbled it all up and pulled them out. I am not going to introduce each person. They know where they are on that list, each candidate. So we'll just have them come up when it's their time. Um, they're each given 10 minutes to present themselves and their platform, and then we'll move to the next candidate. Um, since we do have 11 candidates, it would be tough to have an open Q&A just because of the time constraint. So what we'll do at the end is have a meet and greet time. We've asked um, if the uh, candidates could please stay around, and if you have a question that you would like to ask a specific candidate, that will be your opportunity to do that. That's the best way I could figure out to do that so that we wouldn't be here till midnight. So, um, without uh, further ado, also there's this, this neat little clock right inside here so they'll be able to time themselves. Um, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce, I don't even have my list up here. Tracy. 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 Yeah, I'm Tracy. I believe you. I do believe you, but I want, there's three parts to this name and I don't want to miss any of them. So the first uh, candidate will be Tracy Powell Markle. She will have 10 minutes and then we'll just keep going down through the list. So I want to say welcome. Thank you for caring enough to be here. All right, we'll get started. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. As you well know, my name is Tracy Powell Markle. I have a different perspective, I think, to bring to the table as a candidate for the 82nd district. I don't think your microphone's working, no. no. Can someone help? Is that better? Yeah, yeah. that's better. Just need to be a little Oh, there quick. is volume. There Maybe is we volume. can just turn it up. Careful now. Try that. Hello. <laughs> so you all caught my name. Thank you. My father was born and raised in Mifflin County on the Junietta Terrace, Visco Hill. And the reason I mention that, I think it's important because I don't just talk about caring about Mifflin County. I care about Mifflin County because my father came from there, was born and raised. I lived there for three years before settling to Junietta County. So it's very important to me. Uh, I'm so sorry. The thing I bring to the table, for the last 20 years, I've had a front row seat in courtrooms all over the Commonwealth as a freelance court reporter. So I have my finger on the pulse of what is going on in all the communities. Drug addiction, alcohol, breakdown of the nuclear family, I've seen it all. I don't get my news from a newspaper. I get it in the courtroom. I was a single mother for 16 years. I went back to school, college, when I was 27 years old. It was one of the top uh, three court reporting schools in the nation. The dropout rate was 85%, and the only reason I mention that is I think it proves that I stuck with it. And uh, for the last 20 years, like I said, I've been working at starting and running my own business. I have over 50 clients, 
all over the Commonwealth. The other thing I do, I cover House committee hearings in the state capitol, so I rub shoulders with all the state representatives. I've been doing that for 15 years. I will tell you this, most of the ones I meet have a hard job, it's not easy work, and I can tell you from just campaigning the last six weeks, it's not an easy task, but a lot of them, their heart is in the right place, but I know what goes on. I'm there for 15 years. Every department, uh, state department, I've done budget hearings for for the last 15 years, produce a transcript for them. Every single department, I've heard just about everything. Also, something I'm very passionate about, the four most influential men in my family served their country honorably in four branches of the military. My younger brother is still currently serving and was just promoted to uh, Marine Major. I'm very proud of he and his family. So one of the top issues I think we have in the district is property tax reform and speaking with people all over the district, everybody, that's one of their main concerns. So I would work hard on that. I don't know if we want to raise the sales tax a little bit, so renters have to pay also, but we need to do work on it. I'm not going to promise elimination of property tax. It's got to come from somewhere, just like minimum wage. If you up minimum wage, you're going to see it in your burger. Your burger's going to be more expensive. You're going to see it in other areas. Veterans, as I stated, are very important to me. And I'm sorry, when you have someone you love that served in the military, you have maybe a little more passion, maybe, about your country. I think that's where some of my passion comes from. Farmers, I've met with 20 in the last four or five weeks. I've met with dairy farmers, chicken farmers, beef cattle, swine. One of their top concerns is property tax. Some have told me that they're taxed on their farms, all the buildings on their farms, like per 100 square foot of the building. When we have like a mansion or a big, big house locally that's paying the same type of property tax, yet they're not producing revenue. The farmers are. A lot of farmers are concerned with dairy prices, and I understand this in talking to them. I don't know what the solution is, absolutely 100%. Some are upset with Walmart milk being produced in Indiana now, but then I have another dairy farmer tell me they don't mind that because at least they're buying milk. And this might sound a little easy, like an easy fix, but five different farmers have said the number one thing is we need people understanding where our food comes from. So education and classes in schools to promote where our food comes from and explain it to everyone and the importance of buying milk and milk products, even whole milk. Let me see. Bear with me. School safety. I have first-hand knowledge of this and I'll tell you why. In my 20 years as a court reporter in, in the courtroom, it's nothing for us to have a juvenile whisked away from a school district and come right into the courtroom. Some of them might be fighting tooth and nail and it's a very sad situation, but they're usually sent away to a juvenile detention center. The only happy things we see in a courtroom are adoptions and when juveniles or a criminal turn their life around. Those are about the only happy things. So school safety is a big concern of mine and the community with everything that's been happening. Uh, I'm a staunch NRA member. I believe wholeheartedly in our Second Amendment rights and I don't want them infringed upon. My belief is it's not the gun's fault. There's always going to, a criminal doesn't care about laws. They're going to break the law. They don't care. I see it for 20 years. They don't care what the law is. 
I would like to see better policies in place, ex-military, ex-police, every courtroom I cover all over the Commonwealth, they have at least two deputies manning the doors. I see a couple in the audience. And there are metal detectors. So I think that's very important. We need to take it seriously. Enough's enough. When are we gonna learn? I'm so sorry. I don't feel well. Would you like me to step down? It's okay. You're on most of the time. I am? Yep, you are. Wow. You're all right. You only have like three minutes, so if you if you're finished, that's fine. Here's something else I would like to do. I don't know every role of a state representative, but I believe I know the most because I've worked with them for 15 years. I would like to make a difference. I was a single mother. I had my daughter when I was a senior in high school. I want kids to know you make a mistake, you have the ability to turn your life around. And I think I would be a good, I haven't been perfect, but I think I could make an impact on kids, and kids are very important. Is that okay for now? Good. Sorry. Can you hear me okay? okay. Uh, my name, I want to thank first, I want to thank the Gina River Valley Chamber of Commerce for hosting us this evening. Um, my name is Josh Fultz, and just to clarify for everybody here, if you've heard it on the radio, I had a few people ask me today, it was in the paper. You know, I'm not the same Josh Fultz that got hit by a train. Um, I'm here, and although I do hear that he is fine, and, and I wish him a speedy recovery, that, that was not me. Um, and for those of you that don't know me, I'll just give you a brief um, background on, on myself. I'm a lifelong resident of Juniata County, and I'm the son of a factory worker and successful small business owner. My dad, Jim, has worked at Overhead Door for nearly, nearly 35 years, and my mom, Stacy, has overcome the adversity of being a teen mother and uh, the struggles of epilepsy uh, to become a co-founder of a successful online travel agency, and that agency is only one of a handful in the country to receive top honors from the Walt Disney Company. Through their actions, my parents have shown me that dedication and perseverance pay off. And throughout my life, I have applied that same work ethic to my family, to my jobs, and to my current business as a realtor. And I will carry that on through the campaign trail, and God willing, as your state representative in the 82nd District. I graduated from Juniata High School in 2003 and attended Chippensburg University, where I studied political science and was a founding member of the Rechartered Kappa Sigma fraternity on campus. And I also helped to reestablish the Interfraternity Council on campus. While I was there, life began early for my high school sweetheart, Heather, who is here tonight, and myself, and we had our daughter, Elizabeth. A few, a few years later, we found out that we were going to have our son, Samuel, so we decided it was time to come home and get to work to raise our young family. I worked at Renaissance Center in Burnham, handling, handling collections, and Heather was a stay-at-home mom going to school online. I went from there to become the finance and insurance manager at Lake Chevrolet in Lewistown, where I helped folks get financing for their new cars and sold them warranties and paint protections that, you know, everybody hates, but when they need it, they need it, and then they thank me for selling it to them. Um, while at Lakes, I kept with my passion and I finished my studies by obtaining my bachelor's degree in political science from Arizona State University online. I left the dealership then to try and help small businesses by becoming an account executive for ABC 27 in Harrisburg. Last year I decided that I'd take the leap into real estate where I had a very successful year for my first year in 2017 and 2018 is actually looking better already. And as I've been going to door, door to door talking with our neighbors here in the 82nd district, there are a few topics that continually come up. The big issue on everybody's mind, at least when I show up, is taxes. Uh, whether it's property tax or just making sure our money goes to the right place and not into the hands of special interests. One of my main focuses as representative will be working to reform our tax structure. With our current corporate taxes being the high, second highest in the nation, 
we are chasing businesses away from Pennsylvania rather than attracting them to it. We have the workforce, we have the facilities, and we have the space for expansion with our industrial parks and business parks. Now we need to make sure Central PA is a more attractive place to do business by creating a more favorable tax structure and going out and meeting with business leaders to bring them here. We also need to create an environment where entrepreneurs can pursue their passion to create and maintain successful small businesses. And where corporate taxes are crushing our businesses, you all know property taxes are hurting our seniors and especially our farmers. As state representative, I will work to pass legislation to eliminate the crushing burden of school property tax in Pennsylvania. Funding our schools should be done in a more equitable manner to relieve the overwhelming weight placed upon our property owners. There are bills out there like SB and HB 76 that are, close, that are the closest we've ever been to realizing this goal. Passing these bills or something similar is something that, that must be done uh, to help this commonwealth and it's something that I would like to make happen. Logically, the conversation usually goes from property taxes and education um, and what we can do for our children. As a father of two children, uh, currently going through the system and a wife that works in the Juniata County School District, this is a topic near and dear to my heart. Our schools have a responsibility to give our children a proper education. The district should work, be working to ensure that they, can, they are providing for our children with what they need by hiring good teachers and get, getting rid of bad ones. If they cannot do that, then we as parents should have the ability to choose to send our kids somewhere else, whether it's a private school or homeschooling. We also, especially following the events in Parkland, Florida, and the recent activism that we've seen on TV and throughout the land, usually discuss how to better protect our children. And while I personally believe these problems stem from a lack of parenting, the elimination of God in our schools, and an overall cultural shift in moral decay, in our society, I believe that something needs to be done immediately to protect our kids. And then we can work from there in fixing the real root of the problem. So whether it's providing armed security in the schools or training, arming, and certifying teacher volunteers to be armed, we need to clear a path to make this happen. It is also imperative that we defend our Second Amendment rights. Because without that, without our Second Amendment, all other rights can be easily taken from us. Many times on the trail I've been told, don't forget about us when you get in here. That's something I hear a lot. And one promise I can make to each and every one of you tonight is that I will be accessible and available within the district. In Mifflin County, my paternal grandfather is one of seven children that lived in McVeightown area, and a bunch of my family is still scattered throughout Mifflin County. My maternal grandmother still lives in Ferguson Valley. So I can guarantee you that I won't forget about you because every family reunion I'll be rem reminded about it if I do. Uh, plus, my wife does a really good job of keeping me in line, and I hope that each and every one of you would do the same. I'm also often asked, Josh, why the heck would you want to get involved in this mess in politics? Most of the time, they don't say heck, but there are kids here. Uh, I can tell you the biggest regret I have in my life is that I never served in the military to serve this country. And I see this as the best opportunity that I can do to serve you and provide for my, com my community that's given my family and I so much. I'm a pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, anti-tax and spend Republican. I have been all my life. That will never change. As state representative, I will do everything in my power to give us the ability to make our lives and the lives of our children and grandchildren better. I believe that with my education and life experiences, I am the candidate that can make that happen. And while we may not always agree on everything, I promise to always be open, honest, and accessible to you, because that is what we need in a representative. I'm grateful for this opportunity tonight, and I appreciate all the support I've received so far in this process. Uh, for more information, you guys can visit joshfultz.com, find me on Facebook, I'm available, and I'd sincerely appreciate your support come May 15th. Thank you all, and may you have a safe and blessed Easter holiday, and, and God bless you all. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. If you're sitting here tonight, you have questions and concerns, and you're looking for solid answers. I applaud you, the audience, for being here, because you're here on your own time. 
It means that you care about your town and you want to know if I care about the same things as much as you do. You will want to make sure that I bring real solutions to the district, not bandages. I'm not going to update you after I do something. I'm not going to explain something is the way it is. I'm going to include you in the process. I'm going to keep asking you for your time. I'm going to keep giving you mine. Hello, my name is Joe Ugetto. I'm the son of two blue collar parents, Nancy and the late Joe Sr. They've instilled in me the same, same values and their hard work ethics, which I'm lucky to have and proud of. I'm a lifelong resident of the Juniata Valley, born and raised in Yeagertown. I'm also the proud father of two sons, a 23-year-old who just accepted a position as a design engineer, and an 18-year-old who's a senior at Mifflin County High School and has just committed to join the U.S. Air Force. Standard Steel and Burner has been my place of employment for the past 30 plus years. During my career at Standard Steel, I've been fortunate to experience many sides of the business. Quality control, process engineering, shop supervisor, and for the last 25 years, I've served in the sales department as a salesperson. I've handled the jet engine products and our railway product lines. I have firsthand knowledge of the general process, how a project is planned, developed and executed, how long it takes, how much hard work and detail goes into every stage, how important every worker is in the process, and how proud you are of the finished product. My career has provided me with more insight into various roles and responsibilities that I can perform in life situations. Working directly with company presidents, engineers, and the hardworking person on the floor, America's Steelworker, has allowed me to hone my people and my business skills while negotiating and trying to work through difficult situations with other parties, or fostering a relationship outside of my business career, such as in the grocery store, in politics, on the phone with the cable company, everywhere and really everything that's important to me in my life. For many years I used these skills when I served on the Derry Township Planning Commission. So you may be asking, what's important to Joe? Well, you already heard about my family, you've heard about my career. I'm a huge sports fan. I feel sports, among other avenues, creates great opportunities to connect with our kids. These are one of the most important assets and the most valuable part of the Juniata Valley, in my opinion. We need to protect and invest in them for theirs and our future. If you're lucky enough to listen to them, they will tell you what is wrong. I know. I'm personally an assistant baseball coach at Mifflin County High School and a volunteer basketball coach at the Juniata Valley YMCA. I'm also a former as president and vice president of both youth, youth baseball leagues in Mifflin County and spearheaded the implementation of the Challenger Division. The Challenger Division is baseball for special needs children. I recall that first opening day when those special needs children approached, walked onto the field with all the other teams. The smile on their face made every second of our hard work worth it. Some of you know me, and your kids may know me, as a former volunteer with the Boy Scouts or as a past Cub Master and Den Leader in the Cub Scouts. In my church, I'm a former assistant youth leader. As you can tell, I'm listening to the leaders of tomorrow. I also want to help as many people as I can have better lives here in the Juniata Valley. Help them get up and get healthy. As a certified group fitness instructor, I don't want anyone to have the same conversations I once had with my doctor. I'm dedicated to working for the people in the 82nd District. I know that the values instilled in me by my parents, along with the skills gained from my career and community service, have prepared me for the privilege of being your voice in Harrisburg. I believe in providing prompt, attentive service, listening, hearing, and understanding the needs of my customers is essential. And this is the same approach that I will take, and this is the same approach the 82nd District needs. I, I, will, re yeah, I will be re representing the hardworking people of the 82nd District. This office should be held by an individual who can actually offer or find good solutions that we need and that will change our towns for the better. An individual that has experience handling projects from start to finish. Harrisburg needs a drastic new approach. I know some of you have heard this quote before, but it's just plain good and it's a good creed to follow. If we continue to do things the way they've always been done, 
then things will remain the way they've always been. If you give me the chance, I will serve the 82nd District and the needs of the people with your input and support backing me. Currently, there are many pressing issues in our district, our state, and our country. I feel strongly that working to resolve issues in our own backyards is primary and we need, we need to be stronger in making them a priority. We need to bring back family values. We need to open our door to God. This sounds simple, should be simple, but the fast pace of today's society and the darkness that surrounds us on a daily basis, it breaks down our morals and our values. As part of this, I would like to focus on our education system. We need to supply educators with better and more modern resources to enable them to prepare our leaders of tomorrow and our local workforce. Children are our future and should be our priority. Our students need to be able to compete on a national level. We need to invest in the academy to promote skilled labor. We need to find a common ground that promotes a clear path to college or better prepares a graduate wishing to enter the workforce. Let's face it, blue collars become more technical and our children need to be prepared. It's imperative we find a way to provide these resources while keeping the cost within budget because the funding isn't going to fall from the sky. <coughs> Industries and small business once thrived in our communities. By working together, we all have a vested interest in showing what the Juniata Valley has to offer. With an improved education system in place, business and industry will look to expand or relocate to our district. They will see that they have a chance to thrive by tapping into our outstanding workforce. Also, our farmers, they're having a hard time serving from year to year. Soon that some of those guys could be possibly extinct. The farming community needs someone focused on helping them to thrive and grow. Farmers are some of the hardest working people you will find and they need our support. We've, we've heard about real estate taxes tonight. They are out of control. Soon the elderly retirees aren't going to be able to live here anymore on their fixed incomes. People are really being forced to sell, move, even abandon their homes to survive because of high taxes. Our state government must quickly lower the burden on landowners. Younger people will not be able to afford to live here with their families. And let's talk about our veterans. Our veterans are being left out in the cold. Veterans need better health care options. There is a need for more local treatment centers or options. Loading veterans into vans, hauling them out of our district for treatment is costly, burdensome, and just not practical in many cases. These are the people that protected us with their lives. It's time we stand up for them as we once did. Show, show that we are grateful for their service and for their lives and let them know they are valuable too. We are not going to make it hard, demeaning, or unpleasant for them to have basic care and treatment. So, after all my years of experience, I made a difficult promise to myself and to you for something that is even more important in my career. I think I've been very, which I think I've been very successful in. I want to walk away from my job and start working for you, making all these things my first priority and my daily priority. In a way, I won't be leaving my job since I'll still be working for our local steel workers, our farmers, our kids, our educators, our retirees, our seniors, and families. These are not just projects. They are our lives and our community and our community needs them to be in the middle of conversations if we are going to get better. There is a reason they call persons in office public servants. Somewhere along the way that became a phrase or a title. I want to bring back its true meaning. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you this evening, and I also want to extend the, the appreciation for the Juniata Valley Chamber for, for hosting this event. Uh, it, chambers are important to the community. They facilitate the, those relationships between business and you know, people with, within their organization and within their community. My name is Jim Junkin. I'm a Franklin County native. 
I am a, a farmer. That is my occupation. Um, I'm a second generation. My son now is at home kind of steering the ship while I'm out on the road and uh, doing a, a fine job. My start with, is my sweetheart of my the high school is my wife, Judy, which will be, have been married 35 years come this October. I, I, and I can't uh, miss this, but my daughter is sitting over here, so uh, she attended tonight and uh, a close friend back there. And I do see some familiar faces in the audience, which is always nice. But I finished my high school education, went to Nashville, Tennessee, for Nash to Nashville Auto Diesel College, came back started my career in the transportation industry. I worked up my way up through to upper management with Keen Companies out of Carlisle, which consisted of Keen Leasing, Crestwood Trucking, and uh, PDQ Express out of Cheyenne, Wyoming. So I did a lot of, of work for Keen Companies when I left there. I had a lot of responsibility, um, did a lot of traveling with them, and did a lot of specking of equipment. I was fairly young, decided to come back to the farm. My father uh, retired military and retired federal employee. My mother retired school teacher. Uh, we started uh, the operation back in 93, 97, and I wanted to turn that, that operation into a, a, a farming operation that was feasible to pass on to the next generation. I hope that we can do that. We consist of turkeys, hogs, and sheep. We crop. Uh, a little over 400 acres. Along with that, I started an automotive garage in the evenings, so I have a, I am a small business owner also. Uh, throughout the course of the years, I've always tried to get involved with, with activities and volunteerism. I think that's very important. I, I served as president of the Franklin County Farm Bureau for oh, about five or six years I was on that board. And then uh, as soon as I got off that, uh, I was asked to be on the Franklin County Area Development Corporation. I've been on that for about 10 years. I'm vice chair with that. So we see a lot of development on the 81 corridor in Chambersburg, Shippensburg, Greencastle, if you're familiar with that area. A lot of activity, um, economic growth. In fact, it's causing other issues with employment and skilled, skilled labor. But as soon as I got off the uh, Franklin County Farm Bureau board, then I was asked to, to serve on the, the school board. So I said yes, but I didn't want any positions. And uh, within a year, year and a half, they, I, they promoted me, I guess, to the, the president. So I, I served as president of the Metal School Board for five, six years. Uh, my term ended last, last uh, November. That being said, I have three children. Megan, Alan, and Ben. Alan served his stint in the Air Force, and, and all three are married, have families of their own, very productive uh, citizens of society. So I'm, I'm proud of that. With with what I am, with what I can bring to the table is my personal experience and hands-on. And I, I I I've always been an advocate of the the, the hands-on experience. Uh, we all can be book smart, but sometimes we can't always apply that. Uh, I'm still part of the legislative committee for Farm Bureau, so I get to, to Harrisburg quite often uh, and mingle with the legislators, and hopefully I can, can bring some of that knowledge uh, to the 82nd District. And I, I will say this too, I, I have a web page under James Junkin and also jamesjunkin.com and then also a Facebook page. And I'm kind of like Josh. I didn't get hit by a train. But make sure when you do that, there is no S on the end of Junkin. It's Junkin, not Junkins. Um, because if you, if you do James Junkins, you're going to get a surprise. <laughs> I've, had, I've had state troopers knock on my door. I've had uh, parole officers call me. And it's just it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but so I wanted to make that clear. WWF. JamesJunkin.com, <laughs> and um, so as, as far as platform, you know, overreach regulation, that, that's one of one of my big issues because I see it from agriculture. We're, we're considered a, 
concentrated animal feeding operation, so I deal with regulations all the time. It's getting tougher and tougher uh, with paperwork and, and permitting. Uh, we have annual inspections, what, animal welfare inspection. It, it goes on and on. You wouldn't believe how much regulatory, including the manure. But uh, along with that, I, I, I do sit on the phase three whip on the Chesapeake Bay. That was a directive from the Obama era. And uh, I'm currently serving on that and in, in, a, in a work group, ag work group uh, scene. So I was, I've been practicing for these kind of distractions. <laughs> but, you know, along, along with that, with my, my background and hands on in, in the educational side too, uh, you know, from security issues, which is a, a big concern. Uh, for all of us. Uh, I do believe in uh, the arming of teachers on a voluntary base. Uh, someone that is skilled, has a training, let's let the teachers teach. And, and I see there's so much uh, forced onto the teachers through mandates and legislation that at times I, I think that they're more of a babysitter than a teacher. But uh, I, I, my mother was a teacher and I really uh, sympathize for for those teachers um, also along with the education is the, the pension the pension issue uh, from a state standpoint it is just not feasible it can't keep going on it has to be addressed and they did make and take a first step I think that's great um, but there, there's more that I feel can be done uh, secondly is the 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 options and choices of our students you know, the cyber, the charter, the voucher. I, I, I do feel that there need to be options, but there also needs to be accountability and responsibility. Uh, I don't support some of those options, especially the vouchers. Uh, it, it's, it's damaging our public school system, and we need to keep the funds and the, the local tax base dollars in those districts instead of them leaving going for a for-profit organization. So, you know, those three issues with the educational system, it, it's, it, it makes it tough. And uh, with, with the PEASERS, they, they, the state has put that down to the audits of each district, so now you have to show that liability. So when the, when the school district may have a building project and they want to go get bonding, then they're, they're showing that liability. And, and it, it's, it's huge. And, and that all falls down onto the local tax base. Uh, the other is infrastructure and government spending. I think, you know, with, with the, the infrastructure, it's, it's about four or five years ago, they increased a lot of taxes, gas tax went up, uh, fees on inspection stickers, fees on, you name it, they, across the board there's fees. And that was supposed to go towards the highway trans, the transfer fund. And, and I, what I see is when there's money in a fund and they need to, to balance budgets, they, they rob Peter to pay Paul. And, and I, I, if they're going to increase taxes on gas and so on, that's, it needs to go to infrastructure, whether it's bridges and highways and, and uh, the whatnot. So that, that is important to me that we're earmarking funds for specific issues and not, not just shifting money around. As far as the elimination of, of property tax, hey, I, I'm a farmer, that's, that's great, I'm, I'm for it. But that being said, <coughs> along with that, it's just a shifting of money. It's just so everybody understands that. You're not gonna eliminate all the taxes, it's gonna, it's gonna be a shifting. So you're gonna see a higher sales tax, you're gonna see a higher income tax tax on to, to all of us to, to make up that, that funding source. So I think it'll pull more people into that, such as renters or you know, all of us paying a higher sales tax. So that's a good thing. But at the same time, I have some, I have some concerns. I have some concerns taking that tax out of the, out of the local hands, the, the decisions. The school board, you know, at this point, increases those taxes. So, if you take those taxes away from your local base or control, I'm concerned that the state is going to have 
the accountability for that money and to do it in a fair manner or index that it gets to the district. Uh, we all saw what happened to the budget a couple years ago. It went nine or ten months and a lot of districts got in trouble financially, had to go get lines of credit. So that would be a concern of mine in, in that process. Um, as far as the, the, the government spending, I, I do feel that you know with the reduction that some there's some legislation right now that the reduction of, of, of legislators and I think we need to take a, a, a good look at that too. I'm for saving money, but at the same time to every action there's a reaction. And so if we reduce the House legislators and the senators, they're wanting to do it from 50 to 38 with the Senate, 203 in the House to 151. My concern is I think there will be a savings, but it's gonna hurt rural America. And you're gonna see Philly and Pittsburgh with more representation, even more than what we have now. And the districts will get bigger for the, the representative. And there's gonna be an additional cost to the district in doing that. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword and I don't see my time. Am I done? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> was that the ding? No, sorry. No, no, I don't know what There is no ding. You're, you're responsible well, yeah. for your own time, Jerry. <laughs> no. Did you time me, Jerry? You're good. You're good. But with that, I'll, I'll wrap up because I don't want to. I don't want to go over extend the time. But I have four minutes. Uh, four more. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. But with that, I'll, I'll end. It's been a pleasure being here, and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. He was. Uh, he was eleven minutes. <laughs> Now that Jim used half my time, I'll have to be quick. Uh, and again, I'd also like to thank Rhonda and the Chamber for putting this together for us and giving all of us a chance to introduce ourselves to you. Before I introduce myself, just like Josh, just like Jim, I don't want to be uh, uh, the victim of identity uh, misidentified, but. Leach pleads guilty on the front page <laughs> is not me, nor is it any relative of mine. So just want to make that clear. As far as introductions, I look around the room and I think, do I even have to introduce myself? I think I know just about everybody in the room from being around this county as long as I have. But I'm sure there's a few people that have never met me, so I'll start at the beginning. Since we have 10 minutes, last night we had two minutes. And let me tell you something, that was tough. 10 minutes, I think I can start. 1960, I was born in the Lewistown Hospital. <laughs> no, maybe not. Uh, now, I was born and raised in Thompson Town. I've been here my entire life. Uh, I've never left uh, because I love this place. I love Juniata County. I love the Juniata Valley. I know over my lifetime, I've had plenty of opportunities to look around and, and maybe relocate and, and make better wages, have a better job, a better career, but I've always gravitated right back here that I'm not going anywhere. So I've been here my entire life. I live within one mile of where my forefathers landed in 1750 at the Juniata River in Thompson Town. So my roots go pretty deep. But um, as far as who I am, I'm a Christian, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm a conservative patriot Republican. That's who I am and who I'd like to be as your next state representative. Uh, as I said, I was born and raised in Thompson Town. I'm a building contractor by trade. Uh, for the last 30 years, I've had uh, Juniata Valley Construction, building residential homes here in the county, at Juniata Mifflin, and down toward Dauphin County as well. Um, Public service, that's what this is all about. That's who you're gonna hire, is somebody to be your public servant. And I've had a lifetime of public service here in the Juniata Valley. Uh, I started very early, right out of high school. I started as a football coach, youth football, from the little guys up to varsity at 19 years old into my 20s. At age 23, I was asked to serve on my church council, which I thought 
I didn't know what I was doing at 23, but I was elected president of the church council. I served at that for a few years. And then I was asked to serve as, at the age of 28, I was asked to serve as a zoning hearing board officer for Delaware Township. That same year, I was also asked if I would uh, want to get involved in a campaign to elect the next door neighbor I grew up with, Dan Clark. And I thought, yeah, I, I've known this guy growing up as a kid. He lived right across the street. And how cool would that be? A guy from Little Thompson Town would be a state representative. So I joined that campaign. And of course, you all know he won that election. And that, I guess I got the, the political bug at that point because I joined the Juniata County Republican Committee. I served on that committee from 1988 through 2002. And in that 14 years, we elected a lot of Republican candidates in Pennsylvania. In 1993, Representative Clark uh, asked me to come work for him in doing constituent service in Mifflin Town. I worked in the field. I wasn't in Harrisburg a whole lot, but I worked in the field in Mifflin and Juniata counties and Snyder County at that time. In 1994, I actually was the president of this organization here, the chamber. I've actually served, I've also served for a number of years on the advisory board at Omega Bank when it was First National PA was Omega. And um, I've served 21 years as the vice president of Juniata Business and Industry of the landlords of the industrial park over here. And I recently retired from that job. Uh, in 1999, I ran for county commissioner. And at that time, the, the race was pretty boring. There wasn't really anything to talk about. Every one of us stood up here and said, we're going to do a good job for you. We're going to take care of your taxes. And you know, we'll just work hard. And someone asked me if I knew anything about what we had as a 911 center at that time. And I said, no. And they said, well, let me take you into the jail and show it to you. So I had a, this friend who was in EMS and fire services took me into the Juniata County Jail and he showed me a guy sitting in what looked like a glass box. And he was a sheriff's deputy and a turnkey for the jail and an emergency call taker. So I, my hat's off to that Board of Commissioners. They got a, a lot out of their payroll, that's for sure. But what I watched was not good, as when he would pick up the phone to take an emergency call, the, the prisoners would come up to the glass and make faces and, and try to distract him. And that's just no way to handle things like that. So I made a commitment at that time that if I was elected, I would build our county's first ever uh, standalone 911 staff. And long story short, I won that election and I built that center. And there was a lot of people told me, you shouldn't have made that promise. You shouldn't do that. You don't know why they didn't build it for the last 20 years, but you, you should make promises you couldn't keep. But it was a promise I made and I kept. And I guess you could say that was my wall and it got built. I'm very proud of that center. Uh, it saved a lot of lives. My connection to EMS and fire and emergency services went a little deeper than that as even as old as I am. I recently uh, started volunteering. Uh, on the other side of that wall over there is Central Juniata EMS, where I serve as a volunteer. I run emergency calls. I run uh, paratransit. I take people from the nursing home to the hospital, the hospital home. And yes, I've even taken a few people to the morgue. But uh, I volunteer there, and I also serve uh, as the vice chairman of Central Juniata EMS. And I'm very proud of that as well. Two years ago when I came on board, we were financially in trouble, but things have turned around and we've got a grip on things there and I'm very proud of that organization to be a part of it. Uh, I also serve as volunteer firefighter for Thompson Town Volunteer Fire Company. And I don't run up the ladder and get in the house, but I have my turnout gear and I go out and do what I can. Uh, when there is a fire or uh, uh, we get a lot of calls of, highway accidents on 322, been to a number of those as well, and I served last year as the president of that fire company. When I served as commissioner, I also served as president of CETACOG, and most of you, I know a lot of you here are aware of who CETACOG is and what they do, uh, so I've been very involved in bringing funding to uh, Mifflin and Juniata County uh, with CETACOG for infrastructure and business loans and, and cre job creation. 
In 2004, when I left the courthouse, I went back in the building business, and my timing couldn't have been better because in 2007, when the economy went south, the housing market tanked, and there was nothing to build anymore. And I was very fortunate. The Pennsylvania Builders Association contacted me and asked me to come on board as their director of building codes. In that capacity, I traveled all across the state and sometimes across the country fighting excess of codes, trying to keep the cost of housing down. Uh, we were very successful in that. In my five years there, I went up on the hill many times working with the legislature to try to cut the cost of housing through the, uh, the means of cutting codes. And I worked on three pieces of legislation that were actually passed into law in five years. Now, most people will tell you there are a lot of legislators that don't get three pieces of legislation passed in their lifetime. So I'm very proud of our accomplishments there as well. I'm very familiar with the process. Uh, again, whether it be with Representative Clark as, as his aide, the commissioner, CEDACOG, or the Builders Association. I have been to Harrisburg many, many times. I work with the people down there. I know how to navigate the swamp. Yes, it is a swamp. None of us are going to drain it because we're going to be, whoever wins this election is going to be a freshman. We're going to go in there as one person out of 203, and we're not going to be able to do the things we'd like to do but at least I can tell you I know how to navigate there. I know how to get there. I know the people there. I know how to get things done there. I have a track record of having done that, and I know I can do it if elected. Uh, and here I stand. I completely forgot to mention my wife. Lori is here with us. Uh, okay. uh, sorry about that. Well, she got here late, so that's my excuse. So my wife Lori and daughter Laura and Silas are with us. I have uh, we we have six children, and nine and eight and ninths grandchildren. Is this child going to wait till the election, or are we going to? She's due about a week before, so you know that could inter uh, interrupt the campaign. Uh, I'll just close up was saying, yes, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, NRA member, property tax elimination. And maybe someday we'll have a real debate about this. I rented this room two years ago just to do this, just to talk about that one subject. And back then, there were a lot of people saying, yeah, that's been around, that's been talked about. Property tax reform is what we got when Governor Casey brought gambling to Pennsylvania. And I was around back then, and I remember very well, he told us, he told the legislators, if you'll vote for gambling and bring gambling in, we can eliminate property tax. Well, nobody really bought that. But finally they settled on, if we bring gambling into Pennsylvania, we can cut your property taxes in half. Well, that passed. And we got property tax reform from that legislature back then. And my property taxes are $4,000 a year, and my, my homestead exemption is $100. Now, I'm pretty sure, but $100 is not half of $4,000. But that's what you get when you settle for reform. Senate Bill 76 that Josh mentioned and Mr. Junkin mentioned, uh, it's the only answer. And if somebody comes up with something better, I'm, I'm happy to listen to it. But I'm here to tell you, I've been looking at this for years. And it is the answer, it's what we need to do, and it's what I'll fight for. They'll have my vote in Harrisburg. It only missed by one vote two years ago, so I'd like to be that vote. Thank you. children of the depression and the one thing that they taught me sooner than they taught me anything else was how to squeeze a dime and make a dollar. I don't spend money unless I absolutely have a cost benefit analysis worked out in my head and it better benefit a lot better than it costs. A little bit more about me. Born and raised in Lock Haven, went to Penn State, graduated in four years. Now the important thing about that is, 
I graduated with two degrees in four years. And they told me I couldn't do it, so I did it anyway. At the same time, I was on the woodsman's team because the guys at that point in time thought that a girl was only in forestry to get a husband. <laughs> so I had to show them they were wrong. I was also in the Psi Sigma Pi Honors Fraternity. I was also a member of the choir. I know how to multitask. I know how to work hard. I know how to get things done. After graduation, I started grad school, decided that the statistical analysis of data points to determine human behavior just wasn't my thing. So I left school, got a job, tried to figure out where I was going in my life, and then I went on a blind date. The rest is history. I've been married to my husband for 33 years. We have four children and two grandchildren. We have a business. We are farmers. And when I say we are farmers and business in the same sentence, that's exactly what I mean. There's no differentiation. We don't do it for fun. We do it to make money. We decided that in order to take on our children, we needed to expand. Unfortunately, like Mr. Leach, the economy took a downturn at that point in time. Things didn't work out so well. But here's the thing. We're rebuilding. We choose to stay in Mifflin County. We choose to rebuild our business in Mifflin County. At the same point in time, we are planning for the future. We are planning to bring our children into our business and keep our children as productive members of this community. A little bit more about me. This is what I've done. When my children were small, let's just say that I get bored easily. So I would take them with me when I was volunteering. I was a 4-H leader. I was in the garden club and president of the garden club. I was in Master Gardeners and did programs for Master Gardeners. I was a Dairy Princess Committee chairman for oh, probably 10, 15 years. We went all over both Mifflin and Juniata County promoting the ag industry, dairy in particular. For the past six years, I've been on the Mifflin County School Board. For the past four, I've been on the Academy Board. Let me say that the changes at the Academy are in no small measure due to the support of our board and its director, Mr. Petushnik. I am also very happy to say that I have been affiliated in one way or another, off and on for the past 15 years or so with the chamber and their business and education committee. And I'm very happy to say that as part of the Mifflin County School Board, I urged our superintendent to get involved with that committee. And in turn, Mr. Petushnik. And I'm very happy with the results that have occurred because of that collaboration. They have reached out to the community, they have listened to what the needs are in the business and industry sectors, and they are developing programs to better serve the students and the adults of this area. We are committed to developing curriculum, to promoting safety, providing security for our children. They are successful. They will continue to be successful. And I can say that because of our efforts, we have also been sought out by suburban Harrisburg school districts interested in our alternative education programs. We have the Alpha and MC Online programs that we have developed in the past six years that give the children an opportunity to explore other avenues of education. Our director of the Alpha program was asked to speak 
and present his thoughts on how other school districts could develop a like-minded program. The reason being that as the state legislature decided with charter school funding, you guys pay no matter what the price for a charter school education. So we decided to keep our kids in Mifflin County school districts pool of resources by developing our own basic charter school. We can offer a lot of options for our students. And by doing so, we can also offer classes that were not going to be available in the brick and mortar setting. We have children that are taking Russian and Mandarin and being very successful at it. We have graduates who have been accepted to all of the military academies and Ivy League schools to boot. Not athletes, academics. We are developing the programming at the academy so that our students can intern at first quality in a mechatronics program that didn't exist two years ago and be hired right out of school. That's what we're doing. That's what I have done. I am very, very happy with what I have done. And I've done it because basically I've got a big mouth. I push, I push, I push. We have developed our curriculum courses to now include science K through 12. Science is important. When I was given the opportunity with Mr. Petushnik and Mike McMonagall to travel to Carnegie Mellon University this fall, we had the chance to talk to their um, director of autonomous vehicle programming one of a kind on the East Coast. We wanted to integrate some of that curriculum into our school district. And what we discovered was the one thing that we could bring back very easily was introducing soft skills. Do you know that Bill Gates sends his kids to a school where they teach knitting and other forgotten skills because our children don't know how to do that sort of thing anymore. They don't know how to think, they don't know how to problem solve because they are constantly on the computers that he now won't let his kids play with. <laughs> Going forward, my plan of attack. I'm not promising anything except that I will work. I work. I work at the Dollar General in Burnham. I'm the manager. So I know ag, I know ag business, I know retail. And let me tell you, the one thing that they all have in common is watching every penny and working like a dog. When we were gathering our signatures, I was preparing for our inventory. I worked 65 and 70 hours a week, was able to manage to speak with, personally, 240 of my signatures. I'm kind of proud of that. What I'm hearing though is that they are concerned with jobs, not property tax elimination, but property tax reform in another manner. Let's build the tax base. Let's bring the jobs here. Let's keep our kids here. Let's give them the opportunity to get a good, well-paying job in whatever field they are interested in, but let's do it here. Let's not see the children leave. Because as the children leave and we age, our influence anywhere decreases. The rural population needs to stand up for itself. We need to be independent. We need to be self-reliant. We need to promote ourselves. We need to build our own economy. We can't wait for the state to do it for us. We need to have more local control, not send the money to the state so they can dole out to us. Mr. Junkin mentioned the other year about the state budget. We were one of the ones that needed to seek a line of credit. When we did get our money back, we didn't get the money that we spent on seeking that line of credit. The school district's budget is $74 million a year. Each and every school district, almost 600 of them in the state, 
is facing the same problem. Unfunded mandates, out of control pension. State's not doing a whole lot about that. Let's cut some of the things that they're wasting their money on. If it doesn't benefit, let's get rid of it. Rhonda is saying that, no, no, no. I'm glad because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Needless to say, I can talk. So anybody that is interested in hearing more of my platform, I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much. $87,000 a year who can't buy their own lunch. 
and everyone running for this job knows that the job is in Harrisburg. With an $87,000 a year salary, you can provide your own accommodations. You know where the job is. So that's, that is one of the first things that I would put in to get rid of. Um, another thing is the wasteful spending. My husband and I have been married for nine years. Some of those years, um, I've been primarily a stay-at-home mother. I know what it's like to live on a budget. We, as a family of four, on a state forester's salary. Um, I wear this suit. Someone today was talking about it. I was wearing the same suit they saw me in last night. I washed it. I've got those dry cleaner bags in the dry cleaner. I live within my means. I think that's what people in Harrisburg need to do, too. We shouldn't be spending money that we don't have. Um, so that's another thing. I think the state agencies are too bloated. I think they're top heavy. I think that um, I think that there's too much money spent on conferences that are not necessary. I think they could cut back on those. Um, and I think we need someone to get in there and make those cuts. Um, I also love eliminating property taxes. And the plan that I read said that a replacement would increase the state income tax a little bit and increase the state sales tax a little bit, including um, there would now be a sales tax on some food items, but mostly junk food. <coughs> and there wouldn't be a tax on milk or fresh fruits and vegetables. And there would be a sales tax on clothing items more than $50. But if you have the money to buy a $70 shirt, you can pay a little extra in sales tax. And um, we live on a farm. It's a farm my husband grew up on. Uh, it's been in the book family for generations. We have chickens and ducks and pigs. I think that eliminating property taxes is very good for this district. I think it's good for family farmers. I think it's good for senior citizens. I think it's something that we need to do. Um, I also uh, think that we need a representative who values life. I was raised a Catholic. Um, my mother actually caught, taught at a curricular school. Um, it, those values are very important to me. We need a state representative who is going to help women, help set up programs for women who are pregnant to get the prenatal care that they need. Um, and also my, my cousin put a child up for adoption. And um, I've heard stories about the adoption process. I think we need to improve that process in the state so it's easier for families to adopt children, um, a friend of mine adopted a baby and it cost $36,000. Most families cannot afford that. I think we need to make those kinds of changes and we need a representative who values life. My most important role is as a mother. I have two boys and um, I know what it's like to take care of newborns. I know what it's like to take kids to the doctors. I just had my son at the doctors today. Um, I know what it's like to struggle to pay co-pays um, with little children. And I think our state needs to do a lot more to make family leave acts better because, I mean, I've heard of mothers who go back to work two weeks after they deliver. And that's not good. That's not good for the babies. That's not good for the other children in the house. That's not good for the parents. Um, and I think that's something that we need to, to work on. I also think we need to work on ending child abuse. I'm going to go to a sexual awareness, sexual abuse awareness training in May, and that is something that is very important to me. Um, I totally agree with Carrie Benninghoff when he said that we need to change it so that those people who got off the Megan's List um, registry just recently, they need to be back on. As a public safety measure, if you're on Megan's List, you need to stay on that for the rest of your life. Um, I care very much about our local emergency services. My husband is a firefighter, forest fires. He gets paid. I've been talking to a lot of volunteers, um, and I care very much about what they do. I know how hard they work. And if I get elected, my state representative office is going to be at a local fire company or EMS company, 
So it's a better use of taxpayer money. Uh, representatives get $52,000 a year for your local offices, and I think it's better to help out emergency services than it is to just uh, rent a random building on the industrial park road or wherever. Um, I think we need to help the services that we have here. And also, if my office is right there, I'm going to be very accessible. Uh, I think representatives need to be on the ball with getting grants for rural fire companies and EMS companies. These people are volunteering their time to go out to fires at two o'clock in the morning. They shouldn't have to be tracking down representatives and dealing with the paperwork. The representative should be on top of that. I should be handing the paperwork to them and say, oh, here's mine here. <coughs> I have a degree in library science. I have a master's in library science from the University of Pittsburgh. Librarians love to write grants. Um, I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to getting a whole lot of grants and bringing a lot of resources back to this area. And I know that it's going to be more work um, running as an independent because I will have to go out and meet as many people as possible. I'm going to have to reach out to the people who always check the R box or <clears throat> always check the D box. And I have to get more signatures to be on the ballot, which I'm not going to be on the primary ballot beyond November. Um, but I'm a very hard worker. I graduated in the top 2% of my class from the University of Pittsburgh with a double major in history and sociology. I graduated summa cum laude. Hard work is very important to me. Um, and I'm looking forward to working hard for this district. So thank you very much. My name is Nicole Sherlock King. My parents are in the back of the room today. They're Jim and Teresa Sherlock. We're from Spruce Hill, and I'm married to Jonathan King, who's over here. His parents are Denny and Sandy King. We've been married for almost five years now, and we have a beautiful baby girl who has been kind of exiled to the back of the room, but her name is Jalen. I grew up in the Spruce Hill Academia area right next to my grandparents, Jim and Dorothy's farm. I currently live about two miles away from the house that I grew up in. I graduated from Juniata High School in 2003 and from Penn State in 2007. Like many people, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. My degree is in history and throughout college, I kind of toyed with the idea of going to law school or my ultimate dream was to pursue a master's and get a PhD and teach at the collegiate level. So my plan then was to take a year off, do some substitute teaching, feel it out, and decide what I was going to do from there. Turns out teaching is not for me, so those teachers work hard for their money. Um, luckily, I found a job that I love. For the past eight years, I have been working in what Highmark Blue Shield bills as a retail store. So I sell individual policies to people who are self-employed, retired, on Medicare. We do CHIP program signups as well. I meet with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis daily. So I hear their frustrations. I hear their struggles. And I can tell you that in a world of rising health insurance costs and frustrations with the overall system, I still have customers bringing me baby gifts for my little girl, every day I'm at work, I do what I plan to be doing for the people of 82nd District. I listen, I understand, I get you what you want, I solve problems. As for why I'm standing here today, I have to tell a somewhat embarrassing story. So my parents might laugh because they were there. Um, the day of my 21st birthday just happened to fall on a primary election day in Pennsylvania. It was 2006, it was Adam Harris's first time up for re-election. While our plans for the day were set, my father informed me that many people had died for my right to vote and I was going to exercise it. Still stuck in my head 12 years later. But, so off to the polling place we went and then after we went out to celebrate. To make a long story short, the same passion that is driving me right now is the same passion that I expressed then. 
when by the end of the evening, I was telling anyone who would listen to me that I was going to be the next Adam Harris. So when I heard Adam Harris was retiring, I thought, oh my gosh, I really can be the next Adam Harris. I don't know why it took me this long to figure it out, but it did. Um, so my family has not allowed me to forget this story for the past 12 years. We hear about it a lot. So once I came to this realization that fear of the unknown was gone, I feel like this is my time. I actually toyed with the idea in my head for a few weeks before finally making this, the decision. As a mother to a one-year-old who has a full-time job as well, I knew that campaigning was not going to be easy. But I do enjoy a good challenge. Because of my indecision, I started about a week later with my petition, and in two short weeks in a race with eight other Republicans, I was able to get over 200 of my 300 plus signatures by myself. I went door to door, business to business. If somebody said they'd already signed for someone else, I moved on to the next one. But as you can tell, determination is not one of my weaknesses. To be honest with everyone here, my daughter is my number one motivation for seeking this position. As a mother, I have learned so much about my strength and myself over the past year. I love the people of this area, and I want to make this an area that she can be proud to grow up in. So, since, again, nine out of the 11 people talking tonight are Republicans, we're gonna have some little reviews on things. Everyone's gonna tell you they're conservative, and I'm sure our positions on topics are very similar. I'm pro-life, I'm pro-Second Amendment. I believe that, top, that property tax reform is a doable thing. So I'm not gonna dwell on all those topics because you've heard them from numerous other people. So over everything else, I believe that our greatest commandment that we should follow is to love one another. Some days that's easy. Some days, not so much. I also believe that we cannot be an echo chamber. If we were only told what we wanted to hear throughout our lives, we would never learn or grow. So what sets me apart from the nine other Republicans here this evening? In 1999, Columbine happened. I was in high school. In 2007, Virginia Tech happened. I was a senior at Penn State. The university implemented a text response system that would immediately alert us if there was an active threat on campus, albeit a shooter, a bomb, etc. Water main breaks tended to be the number one thing, luckily. So luckily, I have never been in an active shooter situation. Has anyone here? If you weren't or not in the military, you have no idea what these children are feeling. And in a few short years, I'm gonna be sending my daughter to school. I'm not saying I have a solution. I'm telling you I have both the passion and the motivation to make changes, not just in our schools, but across our state. I am here tonight to tell you that I wanna make a difference. I believe I am exactly what this area needs in a representative. I am a part of the community. This isn't just a job opportunity for me. This is my home. And I also have a website, a Facebook page, etc. There are some things on the back table that we brought in. So if anyone has any questions, please see me afterwards. Thank you all for having me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to start by just thanking you guys all for being here. Um, as a history teacher, something that I preach to my kids is the importance of civic engagement, and uh, seeing everybody here tonight is just an awesome example of that. So thank you guys for your time this evening. I'd also like to thank um, our host tonight, too, as well, like others have said, for putting this event together. So thank you very much. My name is Terrence Shepler. Uh, I'm the son of Mark and Dr. Marilyn Mortimer of East Waterford and I'm the son-in-law of Norman and Barbara Book of uh, Spruce Hill, Port Royal. So, um, I live in East Waterford with my wife, Rachel, and I attend Port Royal United Methodist Church. Uh, I've spent the past three years as an assistant track and field coach uh, at Junietta High School, uh, and I'm also a proud member of the NRA and of the uh, Pennsylvania Farm Bureau. 
I'm also a proud Eagle Scout, which is Boy Scouts of America's highest honor. Um, something that I earned at a very young age, which has instilled in me leadership skills that I use uh, to this day uh, in all facets of my life. I attended Millersville University uh, and obtained my Bachelor's of Science degree in 2008. And I furthered my uh, career, my education, and received my Master's in Education from Wilkes University in 2015. I am currently in my 10th year as a history teacher. I've taught Pennsylvania history, American government, as well as AP United States history. My career, I believe, has given me the skills that I think make me the most fit to serve as representative for the 82nd district. I have an extensive background knowledge of the legislative branch at the state and federal level. I've been teaching it for 10 years. I have experience with crafting legislation. I have been worked, uh, I've worked through this process with my students as well, uh, through assignments when we study the legislative branch in school. Two years ago, one of my students crafted a piece of legislation um, with my help that actually won a, there ought to be a law contest um, in the state uh, House of Representatives. This piece of legislation went on and was actually adopted by the PA House of Representatives. I'm an accomplished speaker. I have presented on educational technology conferences at the local, state, and regional levels. Uh, and this, I believe, shows my ability to be a voice for the 82nd District. I'm also a published author of scholarly work, which I believe uh, allows me to, will allow me to obtain grant funding for our district. Uh, there's a lot of untouched money out there uh, that, that people don't have access to, that people don't use. And I believe that I can write the appropriate paperwork to successfully obtain those monies for our district. Tonight, my message is really simple. It's preserve and prepare. The 82nd district is one of high morals. It's one with a rich history. And I want nothing more than to protect those values for many generations to come. However, if we just prepare, we become complacent. And we don't do anything. That being said, we need to continue to prepare to make sure that our district can compete in the future. This can be done in many ways. One of the most pressing issues is small business. Small business is the backbone of this district. And we need to encourage its growth. I believe this can be done through tax relief and tax amnesty to small business owners, um, having them not carry the same tax burdens as large corporations. I believe that we can help by subsidizing insurance premiums for small business owners to help offset the cost of high insurance deductibles and premiums. I also believe that in the idea of trickle-down economics, if we help our small businesses, this will trickle down to us as constituents of the district. This will lead to job creation, better wages, more local choices for us as consumers. I also have a vision of building a thriving eco-tourist destination here in our district. With the Juniata River, we have a geographic landmark to develop around. And the possible impact of tourist revenue from something like this could provide a much needed economic boost for our district. I believe this is something that I could achieve through grants and working with state level agencies aimed at protecting the beauty of the Commonwealth. Our district also owes a debt of gratitude to its farmers. They truly are the heartbeat of the 82nd district. A top legislative priority would be fighting to remove burdensome property taxes that continue to hurt farmers as well as many landowners of the county. I believe this can be done with a small increase to sales tax, a tax that is consumption based and applied equally to all residents of Pennsylvania. Our farmers also need protection by means of diversified crop insurance options. Funding this safety, safety net is something that must be done. I also would like to work to introduce something like the PA preferred products with Mifflin, Juniata, and Franklin counties, where people can sort of um, do shop local and buy local and help our farmers in, within the um, counties. Uh, and I believe that we need to continue to work to attract new farmers as well. And this can be done with low interest or no interest loans to help get young farmers started. As a teacher, I'm ever mindful of the fact that this district will only continue to be successful if the next generation is prepared. Helping our students obtain the best possible education has to be a top priority. I believe our public school system here in our, in our districts are doing just that. I will fight at the state level to help give back more control to local school districts who truly know their students' population and what's best for them. 
I will also continue to fight to eliminate the standardized tests and federally mandated curriculum that I believe has been the biggest factor in the decline of true learning in our school system. <coughs> As the son and a brother of a Marine, I believe that we also must continue to fight for our veterans. I think that includes upholding things like job preferences for vets, increased funding for medical care, as well as medical establishments within our district. And finally, increased funding for support of PTSD and research and awareness on that topic. Our first responders are faced with continuous financial burdens, and the days of surplus handouts at the state level is over. Our district first responders do amazing things for us, and I'm not talking about just saving lives. Uh, the things that I see, the community outreach in our districts is amazing. Uh, and I believe that with my writing abilities, I can secure grants to help our fire and EMS get the funds that they critically need. The opioid epidemic has also plagued parts of our district at the state level. I will fight to help develop best practices for prescribing opioid-based drugs to try to stop addictions before they start. Find grants and state funding to assist our counties and nonprofits in combating the heroin and opioid epidemic through educational efforts, treatment programs, and recovery services. And also try to fight for tougher punishments for heroin and opioid dealers. Finally, as a proud NRA member, hunter, and concealed carry holder, I am dedicated to protecting our Second Amendment rights. Now more than ever, these rights are being challenged, and I will work to protect these rights for the law-abiding citizens of the 82nd District. There, I, I also would like to expand reciprocity into the surrounding states for concealed carry holders as well. There's a lot of work ahead for our district, preserving the rich traditions while preparing for the future. I believe without a doubt that I am the one to lead us into that future. Thank you for your time and for your support May 15th in the primaries. Hey everybody, for those of you who don't know me, I'm John Hershey from here in Mifflin Town, and I, as the 10th candidate to speak, I'll try to make this quick here tonight, and you know, as the youngest candidate in the race, uh, you know, it's probably getting close to my bedtime too, so <laughs> I'll try to, try to make this a quick one for you guys. So I wanted to thank the Chamber for putting this on tonight, and I value the Chamber's mission to be the voice of pro-business and pro-growth policies in the Juniata Valley. And I actually wanted to tailor my speech, since a lot of you know me already, wanted to tailor my speech a little bit toward my own experience with starting a small business and how I can tie that experience in with being a great representative for this area. When I was still in college, I started a small company called Bantu Coffee, which means East African people, to help fund the work of Hinga, which was the agricultural financing nonprofit that later employed me. This coffee company sought to capitalize on a trend of convenience that we see in the marketplace today, like grocery delivery and Amazon delivery of things you normally buy. And we were going to ship coffee directly to people's doorsteps as a way for them to enjoy good coffee that also had a cause. And we invested in, in coffee growing cooperatives overseas. And we did capitalize on that opportunity. Before the first year was over, we had already provided a $10,000 grant to Hinga to fund some of their coffee growing work. But as many small business owners are painfully aware, regulation eventually caught up with my partner and me. To truly go, grow and compete with companies like Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts that were entering the subscription coffee marketplace at the exact same time as us, we needed to scale and start roasting our own coffee pretty much immediately after we got into the business. As people in food service can tell you, there's, there's a pretty high barrier to entry when you, when you try to, to scale up a food service enterprise. Our coffee company was the biggest, was the nonprofit's biggest driver of growth at the time, but we didn't have the money to keep me and my partner on board while still providing adequate revenue to Hinga. And it was some of the rules and regulations I can still remember spending four hours one morning just trying to figure out how to import green coffee beans from Uganda. Thankfully, you can still buy Bantu coffee today. 
It still provides an incredible service to coffee growth and development and has provided tens of thousands of dollars to Hinga's work overseas. But if it isn't already obvious, I'm here in front of you today and I'm not running a coffee company anymore. With the rules and regulations surrounding starting a food service enterprise, the barriers to entry were too high to keep me and my partner on board and still retain our mission while not being crushed by some kind of coffee producing giant like Starbucks. Later, after working for the nonprofit that I work for, I took this experience and tied it into the legislative arena. I, I took my ag background and upbringing with 4-H and FFA and working at my family's farm equipment dealership and my international development work and went to work at handling agriculture for a U.S. congressman at the federal level. While there, the congressman and I took a leading role in fighting regulations imposed on our farmers and energy producers uh, by the prior presidential administration. Some of these regulatory repeals have already taken effect. You might have seen that the president is currently reviewing the clean water regulations imposed by the last presidential administration, and we were part of the bipartisan group of congressmen that, that pursued that initiative. And others are still being considered by, by the current president in office. I've also worked to get work requirements for welfare for able-bodied adults and able-minded adults into the next farm bill, although, although the, the other party is, is currently uh, throwing a wrench into those negotiations. And I also work to get Pennsylvanians back to work by doing a lot of research for job training programs for the tax bill that got into the tax bill as initiatives from the congressman I worked for that were eventually signed into law by President Trump. And my work's extended to avenues you don't typically think about for providing opportunity as well. I did write a provision to get more mental health funding for our veterans that was actually inserted into the recent spending bill that was signed into law by the president. Often, we owe our safety and security to well-intentioned government policies. But also often, these policies are bad for the American small business and Americans that are trying to get back to work. Some of the clean water regulations that the Obama administration implemented, um, you know, while while intention, they not only slowed down some of our farmers' productivity, but they prevented them from getting to work entirely. These well intentioned policies not, not only slowed growth, but in some situations, it stopped it. As a legislative aide to a sitting U.S. congressman, I've already taken a leading role in fighting regulation and promoting growth. I plan to do so as a state representative who's ready to hit the ground running, who's already written legislation, who's been in the room where it happens, and understands the political framework surrounding a lot of these tough issues. As your state representative, I'll go to bat for this district, fighting, fighting onerous regulations from the DEP or the Department of Labor, while working not only to provide jobs, but lessen those barriers to entry for our citizens to, provide, to find good work, and provide meaningful job training in both technical and soft skills needed for people to find a job. Here in the Juniata Valley, we're smack in the middle between Harrisburg and State College. And our area, I believe, in my opinion, is poised for unprecedented growth. We just have to seize that opportunity. And we have to work for it. As your state representative, I would work to put more money into grants for our job creators, work to on-road people to these jobs, and help provide technical training and assistance to those looking to on-road into a new career or to augment their existing skill sets. Our businesses could use the workers and our citizens are ready to work. We just have to create that opportunity for them. As your experienced candidate with legislation, I'm prepared to do that from day one. And I believe I'm the candidate best poised to lead this community for our generation and the next to come. Thank you for your time and thanks to the Chamber for having this event. practice and I needed to look a little more presentable than I did when I left the track. 
I have always known, and it's validated tonight after listening to all of these speakers, that I truly agree with a lot of what was said here. I am not anti-Republican. I am not. I am Kim Smith Hart. I attended Junietta High School, graduated in 1986, graduated from Penn State in 1990, was hired at Junietta County School District in 1990, and I have been teaching for 28 years. I have been a coach for 28 years. I have coached basketball, and I have mostly coached track. I am currently the head coach. This is my 11th year. It is a very grueling job, but it is amazingly rewarding. I have 120 athletes on my team. I know every single one of them. I know about their life. I know about their families. And I care about their decisions. I am their coach. It is my job to improve them as an athlete. But more importantly to me, I try to improve them as citizens. I try to guide them in life decisions. I try to encourage them to do what they believe in. I try to be supportive when they need help. And that lasts beyond them being on my team. And I am looking around here tonight, crazily, and I see more than a handful of my former athletes and students. And I can tell you that I believed in them. A few of them are our candidates. I respect them. I feel every person in here running for this position has assets that everyone could agree are validly acceptable to, to be in, in our position to represent what all of us stand for. As a representative though, we are expected to be among the people. We are expected to represent the greater good of our district. We are expected to learn things that we do not know not just vote, because it is the day to vote. We are expected to pay attention to all of the concerns of the constituents. We are expected to seek experts on those positions if we have no idea. And we can't be afraid to say we don't know. We have to be willing to go to those who do. As a teacher, I have dealt with multiple superintendents, multiple principals, but I have taught among a network of men and women who soundly believed that education is important and our curriculum is very important, but what we do for the whole person is what has to come first. And that's what a representative needs to do. Our individual thoughts and opinions are important. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes America. That is what makes this a place everyone in this world wants to live in. But it is our job to find a way to take the district that you live in and enrich it improve it, and secure it. I love being a teacher. I love being a coach. I had a conversation last night with some of my athletes, and they said, would you really not be our coach next year if you win? And I said, I don't really want to talk about that. I really don't want to talk about that. Because yes, that would be very hard for me. But I told the kids, they're juniors right now, and next year would be their senior year. I said, in a few years, 
all of the things that I would get to do if I was fortunate enough to be elected or what are going to affect you the most? And I said, not only that, I want people like you to come back. So many of my students and my athletes and my children say that they're not going to come back here. That's hurtful. It's very hurtful to think that the closest people you have raised, you have grown up among, you have taught, don't want to live here. And I am and using that is, is a big part of my motivation as to why I'm doing this. We've got to find a way. I think Terry was spot on. We have the resources in this area to take tourism to the highest heights. We have wineries, we have the river, we have the forests, we could have trails. We can do so much with what we have here, and that is why most of us like to be here. That's the asset that needs to really be taken somewhere. And since I got into this process, um, I'm friends with Misi Baker, and she has alerted me to so many grants and opportunities that have been out there. And I'll be honest, I had no idea. And yes, people can say, well, that's, gov that's government money and that should be used for something else. And well, it's government money that's there. And it's government money that people in Juniata County and Mifflin County aren't using. Other places are. Erie, Hazleton, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, not us. And so if it's there, we might not think it's necessary, but it's there, it should come here. Another thing that happened, I am the current chairperson um, for the Democratic Committee. And I'll tell you a little bit how that happened. I um, was curious as to why the Democrats hadn't been at the fair. Uh, I asked some people what was going on, like why, why we never saw Democrats. And they said, well, there isn't really a committee, and if you're so concerned about it, maybe you could be in charge of it. I said, okay. I really didn't have time to do that. But I am a person, if I'm gonna expect there to be something and someone challenges me to that, then I'll do it. And so we started having meetings. We aren't here to be this big democratic presence that goes against everything Juniata County stands for. In fact, through being the Juniata County chairperson, I go to state committee meetings now. And I am in the rural caucus there. And one of the biggest issues, the first time I went, I sort of sat and listened to everybody. I went to every seminar I could. I listened to what everybody had to say. But what everyone kept saying is, how did we lose? How, how, what is going on? And my answer was that rural America is not being represented. The Christian base in the Democratic Party has wavered. And when I spoke up about that, they said, oh, do you go to church? I said, yes. I'm the attendance secretary. I'm an active member of Fort Early United Methodist Church. Crazily. <laughs> Going to church does not make you a good Christian, believe me. But because I said that, next thing you know, I get a phone call. Would you design a pin that we, the Democrats could wear to show that there are Christians that are Democrats? Sure. So I designed a pin. And now the Democratic Party, everybody's wearing a pin that has a verse from Corinthians on it. And the verse is dealing with not judging. And my personal opinion is, I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. It is our job as an American to find the good, find a way to compromise, find a way to give and take. Because if we don't, 
Our road is narrowing and narrowing in this country and it is getting dangerous. We are going nowhere quick. I go to bed at night, I pray for a lot of things. But I will tell you, and this I'm not saying this because I am a candidate for this office. I am telling you that working with young children and these athletes and seeing what they face and seeing what they fear and hearing what they have to say, I know we have to find a way to do something in this area. We have to find a way to do something about opioids. We have to do something about public education that is failing and we're going to end up with an elitist society if we do not fix a lot of things in public education. I could talk for three hours on that. We have children that are growing up in a society that is scarier than anyone has ever seen. And we are going to leave here someday. And it is then that we are going to have to depend on. And yes, we might be mad that there's student protests. But maybe the students are wondering, everyone tells us we have a voice. Everyone tells us we have an opinion, but we go and do it and we get condemned. Kids today have a lot of fun. They have a lot they like to do. And I can tell you, if they are taking their Saturday to travel to a place to stand up for something they believe in, it's not for attention. And we don't have to agree with it. My husband's in the NRA. My husband and my son are avid hunters, avid fishermen. My son can't wait to come home tomorrow to go fishing on Saturday, okay? Most Democrats don't want to take your guns. You might hear it on TV. Most don't and never will and will never try. I am telling you, I will represent you. I am taking a chance of leaving a career that I love because I think it's time that we've got to find a way to bring the middle back to our state and our country. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank everyone here for your respectful attentiveness. Um, it was a long evening, but everybody was very respectful. I appreciate that so much. I'm sure the candidates do as well.